so everybody, I'm, I'm, you know what, I'm pretty much, I've decided, excited to talk all the time. I'm pretty, <laughs> pretty much excited to work the show. But this one in particular, I think is super special because of all the nuance that this conversation needs, yeah. but unfortunately isn't having, especially right. like in the public eye. So today's episode is about cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. Is there a difference? What does that difference look like? And why, as Americans, it's so deep-rooted in society and life? So first and foremost, cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation. Is there a difference? And what's your opinion on it? I think we all agree that, that like cultural quarantines is not the solution. Mm. Right, right, and from and from a perspective like of yeah, choice. cultural um, quarantine. Let's get it. Yes, that's certainly not the solution, right? Yeah. And I think we can all agree that there's a value in diversity. Yes, right. Um, and if colonialism relies on like dividing people, right? Like we need, we all agree we need to be together, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I think we, I think we also know when somebody is clearly doing something that is uh, being disingenuous with the cultural artifact. Yes. Right? Yeah, like that's right. don't yes. tell me that you went to a frat party and you painted your face black and it didn't occur to you that that's not a thing that you should be doing, right? <laughs> yes. Like, don't tell me that. Like, you don't need, Period. You don't need to do that, right? Yeah. And so I think, so if there's a spectrum of things that are appropriate, I think right. that I think that a, a reasonable standard is just to like actually honor the culture, mm -hmm. right? It's not me that said this, but somebody that did, who, whose name I, I forgot right now. Someone smart said uh, something. Uh, yeah, no, 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 but, but um, if you value the humanity as much as you value the cultural artifact, then, that, then that's where you wanna be, right? Like value mm -hmm. the person, like if that's we good. value people of color the way that we value their sneakers, mm. then I don't know that everybody would be as upset. Um, I'll start there yeah. and pass it on, but. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I like to keep it really simple with, an idea of celebration versus mm -hmm. an idea of theft. Mm -hmm. I'm taking something and I'm trying to make it my own yes. and pretend that it's mine and it's mine originally and I'm just doing this because of me yeah. versus I'm doing something, like even the shoes I'm wearing right now could be considered a level of appropriation. But mm -hmm. to me, I like red, I like sneakers. I, I have a company called Red Suede Shoes. I'm celebrating that, that these are beautiful. <laughs> this is part of who I am, but that doesn't mean I don't know that there's a culture behind it. So when I walk in these shoes, I'm not just walking around thinking I'm the shit because of it. There's a, there's a level of appreciation that comes to that. Yes. But you have to be aware to think that way. Yes. And I think that's a matter of exposure mm -hmm. and understanding yeah. of the people around you and, mm -hmm. and learning to hear stories and, and being curious. I think at the core, it's about the curiosity of yeah. where do all these different cultural attributes come from or mm -hmm. cultural um, uh, phenomenon or style points or different things that we're looking at or mm -hmm. artifacts, et cetera. And how are we then learning the, the history? How are we learning how this became to what it is and yes. where did it get started? And how do I participate with this now in my life and with the people around me? Facts, that's good, that's facts. Oh, man, those Yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is just not criminalizing cultural differences mm -hmm. um, and not like mm -hmm. dehumanizing them. Like you were saying, like make sure to appreciate the human as much. Mm -hmm. um, I remember being young and going to a friend of mine's house who was from a completely different culture. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming home and I was like, oh yeah, their house smelled weird. And my parents like sat me mm -hmm. down and they were like, no, their house doesn't smell weird. I was like, yeah, it smelled weird. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, it smells different because there's a food amongst their culture that they eat. Mm -hmm. And when they cook that food, it has a strong smell. Mm -hmm. And that's how their home smells. Yes. But it doesn't smell weird. It just smells different. It's yes. weird to you because you haven't seen it before. Exactly. But that doesn't mean it's a bad exactly. thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. where the weird word as a kid or the words that we choose to describe things are yeah. really important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. And so, and like, as a child, I'm trying to think back again. Yeah, but that's like, great. if no one then, like, if your parents didn't challenge your thought at that moment, yep. you just walk around automatically from from a child, not yep. demonizing but otherizing folks. Exactly. You're just like, oh well, that's just strange. I don't yeah. mess with that. Instead of being challenged, being like, hey, it's just different, and yeah. different is totally, totally yeah. acceptable. Yeah. Which eventually leads to being demonized. I think. Yeah. Because yeah. I think when you start to go, oh, like, yes. that's weird. I don't understand that. That's not normal. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to slide that into the category of, well, that's completely out of order. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't be allowed. That's illegal, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know? um, so I think, yeah, just like having, a, having the same appreciation for our culture that you have for your own and understanding that different isn't wrong, it's just different. 
I like what you said about that's not normal, but it's normal to be different and normalizing the fact mm. that there are differences yeah. is yes. where we have the biggest opportunity to engage with our young people and, and share the different levels of culture and yes. share yes. the different levels of appreciation of that and say, yeah. you know, there's always going to be something different, but not everybody's exposed to that at a young age. I mean, here in Chicago, it's a lot easier. There's a lot of different cultures present, but sure, in sure. other areas of the world, or of this country, or even of this state, there's pockets of people that only look like each other. Sure. So I think that's where we find ourselves in rooms like this, in conversations like this, and understanding that a lot of people have not had that exposure, have not had that learning opportunity. Their parents never had to have that conversation because every house they went in smelled the same. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have yeah. that opportunity yeah. to learn yeah, at a young age. Yeah. So then when you get older and you have instances where you come up against culture mm -hmm. and you don't know how to interact with it, you're not always going to get it right on the first time. Yes. So there's a level of forgiveness and understanding and growth that everybody has to have yes. with each other because it is not always intentional, even if it comes off as like a real shitty thing to do or a yeah. real shitty way to act. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, it's, it's so, I mean, it's, I said this before, but it's so important to be able to have an honest conversation about your discomfort interacting with or depicting or describing, yeah. whether it's like face to face or with somebody you love or somebody else you know, mm -hmm. like people that are different than you. Yeah. You have to be comfortable having that conversation or you're not gonna make any progress or learn anything. And there are, there are models for honoring cultural artifacts, right? Yeah. Like if you are a fashion designer mm -hmm. and you want to like take certain elements from a culture in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Then then get out there, right? I mean, this has been done before. Yes. Like go out there, be in the community, have a conversation with them. And like if you if you want to have an element of financial attribution too, mm -hmm. like no one's going to be mad at that either, right? Yeah. Like if, if you want like a royalty <laughs> arrangement, yeah. Do that too. Why yeah. not? Right? I mean, do that I would too. say that that's almost essential. Right. To be honest. Go ahead. Yeah. Go because, ahead. Because go ahead. The, go ahead. Yeah. I would say yeah. it's essential yeah. to some degree. Go ahead. You know? Tell me that. Okay. Because the big, big thing I feel like in reference to cultural appropriation and the reason why it's not just such a buzzword, but it's literally embedded in the DNA of America. And I'm not sure if cultural appropriation is something that's discussed in any other country, but here we as, I don't want to say as Americans, but in general, overall history class, like for example, somebody brought up to me, why did it take Michelle Obama to happen to tell me that, um, happen to tell me that the White House was built by slaves? Like mm -hmm. history books like to leave those things out. Mm -hmm. For example, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's a trash, no, that's a trash, like come on. Like, 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 the food is popping, but the real like the thing was like, oh, bro. oh, the pilgrims were starving, didn't know what yeah, to harvest, yeah, yeah. the Indians taught them how, correction, yeah. the Native Americans taught them how to um, harvest Sp corn. Spawned and then, the fish. Yes, You always yes. see the picture, he's yeah. got the fish, taught them like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we wipe y'all out. And it's just like, but we don't talk about that. So I think the real, I don't want to say like dissonance, but the reason why it's such a flashpoint in society, and I know that I can speak for myself, is it's all about being acknowledged. It's like, like far too often we talk about like culture vultures, this, that, and the third, and granted we'll expand on that term in a minute, but it's the acknowledgement and similar to the way you guys both characterize, like understanding that it comes from something yeah. and understanding that in America especially, if your skin is white, you need to be extremely mindful of where these things come from. Do not try to claim things as own. I remember this one time in, I was, um, I was living in New York and there was some article when they was talking about how they went to Harlem or they went to the Bronx and they had a, a chopped cheeseburger and they were just like, oh man, this is so, and folks was like, we've been doing chopped cheeses up here for forever. Like we can't, like yeah. we can't be out here doing that. Yeah. With the Kardashians and the, the corn rolls or the, 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 so the, like when the, the, the box braids. braids. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like when someone's like, yo, I discovered street corn. It's like, wait, you mean, Elote? Elote? Like, come on now. Like, <laughs> yeah. What you talking about? You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. It's and like, real. I guess to be sustained, because clearly we're all on the same wave, on the same wave in reference to that. It's just being mindful of where things come from, especially if your skin is white. That's, that, that's the real conversation. Actually, I like to open that up to you guys from the standpoint of do you think it's possible for the marginalized to culturally appropriate? Yes, but it's called assimilation. Mm. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. But and it's complicated because it's what was expected. Mm. And that's why it's something that is not talked about in the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, code switching and yeah. having to yeah, deal yeah, with rooms right. of being yeah. around people yeah. that <laughs> completely don't look like you and trying to fit in to the culture of the workplace that yeah. 
you know, people like you haven't always been in, people that look like me haven't always been in them. So yeah. as a woman, there's a level of that that happens too. Sure. But it's uh, it's complicated because it, there, it, it exists, but it's because it was expected for years yeah. that it's not the same type of conversation. It was a pressure to do this versus a celebration of let's all come together and let's, I mean, there's things that everybody should recognize in True. that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a very, very valid point. Well, I think the thing, yeah. that, the thing yeah. that I love that you hit square on the head, and I wasn't necessarily thinking about, but you're right. Like, it is called assimilation. It's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. when, the, when the marginalized do it, it's because it's expected that you fit into this culture in order for you to ascend and yeah. do, and, and like this essentially um, self actualize. I think that's fascinating. I, I, I think it comes from this, this overarching concept that value only comes. Yes when something that is from a marginalized community gets in the hands of someone who's from the community in power. Yeah. So I think when you look at um, like assimilation, it's like if you're marginalized, your value comes from having as close a proximity as possible to the community in power. So it's like you have to throw off everything that you can identify with as a culture, everything that makes you who you are, don't speak a certain way, don't dress a certain way, make sure to do your hair a certain way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then as soon as you get as close as you can to the culture in power, now you have value. Same thing with anything that comes from that culture. Well, in that culture in and of itself, it's seen as weird, devalued, criminalized, I'm a ghetto, whatever, mm -hmm. they, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But then once it gets in the hands of dominant culture, now it has value. Mm -hmm. Now you can make it into a billion dollar industry. You know, now you can do all these things with it. Um, so I think that overarching concept is where like, I'm like assimilation and even I'm like appropriation come from is this idea that like you know this is invaluable mm -hmm. until the person who holds it has value in society and then they make it valuable um, there's a recent statement benedict cumberbatch i probably butchered how to pronounce his <laughs> name, name. Like, that? Um, just declared that he will not sign on to any movie project that his female counterpart co-star is not paid the same as he is yes. so my statement to share that now is because you can't just walk in making noise and expect people to hear you yeah. and you can't just walk in saying I created this I did this it's about and it, it is there's a level of meritocracy earning your place and earning your voice at that table yeah. and once you get there then you can start to show yourself then you can start to be a little bit more comfortable then you can yeah. start fighting to bring other people to the table with you right. but you have to have the ability to get that that spot at the table people yeah. have to hear you first yeah. that and that's where part. the more hip-hop culture was celebrated the more we see people coming through the ranks and everybody like, wait, this is actually cool. Oh, well, now I can talk to this person who before I thought was different, so I wasn't supposed to talk to them, but yeah, yeah. it's accepted in different ways. So yeah. even if you always know in your heart of hearts that it's right to celebrate everyone, mm -hmm. there's a level of permission that's given by that, that value that you yeah. get. And you have to work for that, like every single person. Like as a woman, as a CEO, as someone who started my own business and been in rooms and at the board tables where people turn to me and say, can you take notes or can you get me a coffee? I'm like, no, no, I earned my spot here. Like, you can get your own coffee. Yeah, but I had yeah, to get there in order to be able to say that and laugh about it with them. So there's yeah. like that level of finding your value, finding your voice, and then creating the value for those that yeah. helped create it or are part of that, That's whatever cool. that piece of culture is. This, like, th it is a nuanced issue. Yeah. Yeah. But let's not ignore the fact that there are many, many people that are willfully ignorant of cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I have no idea how many of the peop people in the world that is because I don't have the data for that. But <laughs> That's like, a hard data point. Excuse it, me. It's, no, that. really. But, <laughs> are you a bad person? Are you intentionally <laughs> unaware? Right, right. right. I mean, really, though. But, but you know what? But it's also not that hard of a thing to trust your intuition sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, I don't want to shy away from instances in which I can tell that mm -hmm. somebody is wearing a costume. You know, a um, poser. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and those okay. like those like that's I think that's important to keep in mind when we're talking about appropriation, mm -hmm. like really violent appropriation. As opposed to like, all right, cool, I, I kind of care about this community, and I'm going to do a little research, and there's like a yeah, spectrum yeah. of things that we can talk about of where of the right they way fall. to go about that. Mm -hmm. But there's a whole other group on the other end of the spectrum that's like just trying to know. make money off of other yeah. people's back. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I, but I think some of that comes from in the way that people learn about appropriation or even appropriation phases. Cause like mm -hmm. the reality is like, we all go through phases mm -hmm. throughout 
throughout life. the time I'm a dude mature. <laughs> Especially throughout life. high school, right? You meet mm -hmm. some kids like, yeah, I had like a goth phase, or I had I'm like an emo phase, I had I had a hood True. phase, I, I had a preppy phase, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Now, when those phases happen, people are often told like, hey, it's just a phase. But something that isn't talked about is in this phase, you aren't actually becoming a part of this community. You aren't actually understanding this community. You're just trying it on mm -hmm. for this time. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that you can fully kind of identify with it. Mm -hmm. I think the problem is that people are taught that, yeah, in this phase, you understand everything about it, which is why you can have a conversation with someone who's like, oh yeah, when I was in high school, I used to dress like, you know, real black and I used to listen to hip hop. So I understand everything the black community goes through. Mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, how? 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 Mm -hmm. Is that possible? True. Like, I understand. Like, you, you listen. I'm um, like to Lil White, most likely, mm -hmm. and like maybe like so. You know, maybe like some like juvenile here and there. But <laughs> it doesn't mean that you fully. You know, I mean that you fully understand it. But it's phrased as you know, this is the phase you're going through where you're actually like consuming and understanding culture, as opposed to just taking kind of this like you know stereotypical ride through culture. I will say something that's actually interesting about that, and I'm happy that you brought up that point, that cultural appropriation kind of happens on the spectrum, and there's allies, the people that are actually thinking that they're not being yeah. appropriators, oh, yeah. but that whole entire concept of, oh, well, you know, I used to go through this phase, or I have black friends, folks who say that mm. really, they, I don't want to say they mean well, but like, they really think, and in some shape, Way or form, they are better informed, hopefully, because they have black friends, because they are a bit closer to the culture. But at the same time, it doesn't necessarily give you like the air mm -hmm. to say you understand completely. I, I think everybody's not equipped to have such conversations. I, and I think that's the part that's kind of like, yeah. I don't want to say like tricky and or scary, but like it's people true. want to be involved, but then they're like, oh, and there's that whole so I'm not a cultural appropriator, I'm an ally, which is like a more positive way to go about like, I kind of get it and I'm still learning, mm -hmm. but there's still a lot of nuance and semantics that goes along with that. Yeah. I think that's actually pretty fascinating because it's one of those things of like, and I think the thing that's fascinating is I don't go around trying to claim that I fully understand someone else's experience. And I think that's when it becomes a problem. And this is not just talking about people that want to benefit and profit off of like yeah. cultures that aren't theirs, but people who actually care, but think that they go about it in this way in which like, no, like you really don't understand how, de like, like you can't explain generational trauma to people. Yeah. You know? You can't yeah. validate that by having one black friend. Yeah. You know, like that's just yeah. not one of those things where yeah. like, oh, like, like, no, it's, 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 it's much more nuanced than that. And I think that's an interesting conversation to have and an interesting point to bring up is because it just adds a bit more context. So that's, it, it, it adds a very real layer yeah. that people whom of which aren't on this side might miss. Uh, yeah. like that, like the black friend trope is so funny, right? Because it's, because when people ask me honestly, why, why would you care about this or why are you working at the school that you're working in? Like, the honest answer, the genesis of it all, is because I had black friends. Right? Yeah. Like that's the actual answer. Right? And that's okay. Like, the answer but is that, like, that's like the answer yeah, 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 yeah. in yeah. that context, yeah. right? But, yeah. But I think even even outside of my particular context, it like the point still is that like a black friend or a cultural artifact from a certain community is an access point for people to at least begin engaging with yeah. the community. Yes. So, yes. so even yeah. though I understand so. a, like a reaction to people that don't do it honorably, earnestly, and with humility. Like it's a it is a starting point, yeah. right? But yeah, like we yeah. do have to give people a way to do it that honors the yeah. the where it came from. Yeah. Like, and I think what happens sometimes is like people are cut out when they try to do that by just the label of being um, like an appropriator. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well you're an appropriator, you're completely cut out now. You know what I mean? Like I think about I, I think about when you see like like white kids with dreads mm -hmm. and someone just comes up like you're appropriating. You're appropriate, you're appropriate. And it's like, okay, well, first off, you ain't even like from any sort of Caribbean yeah, nothing. Like you ain't Rasta. Right? Right? You ain't like, <laughs> you ain't um, like me, yeah. 100% sure. But anyways, so you're telling me that I am, how can I participate How can I participate in this? And it's like, well, you can't. And it's like, well, there's gotta be a way. No, you just can't. And it's like, so it becomes this thing like, okay, so are we just, like, is that is is that what we're talking about? Are we saying that it becomes, because it becomes a cultural quarantine, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. There were those two basketball players, so it was one Asian, player who got dreadlocks yeah. and an African-American black player was like, you're cultural appropriating. And he was like, you literally have Asian tattoo symbols on your arms. Like, how is this? Yes. Yeah. Like, if you're going to come like, at me, <laughs> like, and point, do you know though. that yeah. that means something different than you think it means? Like, yeah, 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 so, yeah. so it's a level yeah. of not playing 
uh, like not trying to claim appropriation without actually understanding the whole situation around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So through what you guys had talked about, it reminded me there's a community down in the south called Come Meet a Black Person. Has anybody heard of this? No, yeah. I have not. Come okay. on, this sounds great. come on, that's on the nose. I don't nose. know if I want to laugh or not. Yeah, that's so, super on the nose. Right. So this is a, <laughs> a community a that has, has literally been. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how much they can pay. <laughs> In a community that's very segregated, <laughs> and there was, you know, a, a cross cultural friendship that was created, right. mm -hmm. and she was like, oh, before you, I'd never met a black person, so I didn't know anything about black people. I had no awareness. And she's like, well, why don't we start this? And now it's literally a group of black people and a group of white people that come together and just talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we're still trying to figure that out. It's 2019, yeah. and how many problems are started within cultural issues is because we haven't actually had a conversation yes. with someone that doesn't look like us, yes. or isn't from that same background. Like, I know, Nick and I know each other from my work with Forward, the Four Women in Diversity community, and people ask like why are you a white woman working in diversity why did you start this what what was the story behind it and i went to a public school on the south side of chicago i was never comfortable in a room where everyone looked like me and that i was fortunate to have that from a young age of mm -hmm. i was always in rooms that, that a lot of people look different came mm -hmm. from different backgrounds but that was something like as an adult I kept getting put in rooms where everybody looked like me, and I was like, well, this is stupid. How do we change that? That's why Forward was started, because mm -hmm. professional inclusion has to actually include all different types of people, all different types of backgrounds, yeah. and in order to break that down, we need to talk to each other. We need to know that there's value on both sides of the table, and if you yes. don't see a black executive or a black person in the boardroom, you, you can't. if you can't see it, you can't be it, you can't create it, you can't yes. be a part of it. So yeah. it's like that whole kind of coming together of all of those moving pieces. Yeah. So true. And that's why I thought that community was hilarious. But I'm like, this is true. Yeah, like, they could have yes. had a more I, sophisticated name. Well, I think, I think they definitely could have been well. Well, maybe they like, nailed it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but like, why? At least do like an acronym. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, like, hey, hey. But like, hey, why, why veil it though, tonight? right? Like, like, why veil it? Why try and create also, a brand out of something yeah. that you're literally just trying okay. to create yeah. communication? <laughs> and I've learned about it, actually, because there was some women covering it on a TV show. I think it was like Tia and Tamara and a couple. I don't know what this TV show was like. I just saw a clip on Facebook, and everybody was mad about it. They're like, this is stupid, I can't believe this, and it was a lot of women of color. There were no white women on there, and I was like, well, this is a point of, there's not all the voices at the table, and as a white woman, I know a lot of my white friends that have never really met or gotten to know a black person, yeah, and yeah. that's not necessarily the their fault. Yeah. It's not like, a, what am I gonna do? Walk down the street and be like, hi, you're black. I'd like to make a black friend. Will you talk to me? Because that's inappropriate. Also so like, true. There, there's that <laughs> gap. It's like, am I, am I supposed to like seek out black friends? Yeah. Yes and no, but there's a way to do it. And it's, it's hard to make friends as adults anyways. Now I gotta true. figure out these yeah, other yeah, layers yeah. of it. Yeah, so that never um, sat. <laughs> to piggyback off of that, I think that's a really, really valid point <laughs> because I know at the end of the day, what we're gonna end up saying to close us off is exposure is gonna be huge. Yeah. Us actually being able to connect and see each other is gonna be massive, but we really don't have have places and like per se, like you said, as adults, it's hard to make friends, period. <laughs> like, and I mean, think about it. You walk on the elevator, everybody's like, oh. <laughs> I'm not looking at nothing. Just, just, I asked for someone's phone number on the elevator the other day because I was like, I'd like to make a friend in this building. You want to be friends? And he was like, Okay, and then we went out for beers, but everyone's like, wait, you did that? I'm like, that shouldn't be weird. Yes. When we're little, we play in the sandbox, and then we say, mom, I want to have a play date with this person, let's go. Yes. But literally, everyone's like this, I'm like, hi, excuse me, I just moved in, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Like, what, what are you, a politician? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to make a Sorry. friend. Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of those things where just like, real talk is hard as adults to make friends, period. Yeah. But especially just like, let's say you move to Chicago to meet people that don't look like you, and you finally get here, and this is your opportunity to meet somebody that doesn't look like you, and like, it's just, that's just not the way it works. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's just not that cut and dry yeah. yet. And it's not that those, those pathways aren't available. It's just it's the solution is going to be in places and at events and in rooms where there's true. no opportunity. But. But I'm also be 100. If I'm out kicking it, I, always, I, I don't always want to meet new people. Like, you know, like, I'm much, like, I got my routine. Like, I'm eating, bro. You know? <laughs> you well, know? I, I also think there's a level of, um, I don't know if exhaustion is the right word, but there's a level of exhaustion when it comes to you're always the person in the relationship that is explaining your cultural experience. Yeah. When you're always the person in the relationship that's like, okay, this is my, okay, this is why, I, okay, this is, this is the reason that I, you know, this person like FaceTimes me it's all the time. Fatigue. You know, yeah, 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 this is the reason that I listen to this. This is the reason that in the course of like me and Anthony hanging out, we've shaken up like nine different times. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 
this is the, you know what I mean? This is the, like, and so you start to, you, you start to get to this level of like exhaustion of like, mm -hmm. okay, like, I just want to be with people that can understand. fully understand me, yes. fully appreciate me, and then I and th th then I don't have to be in a space of trying to be like the best version of myself. Mm -hmm. I could even be honest. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like it's, it's like that whole thing of like You're not representing your entire culture. Every yeah. Five seconds. Yeah. 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 In, to what you said, when you come and try and make friends, if you meet someone and they snap at you, and now you think, oh, well, all black people. That didn't must go be rude. well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that right. Didn't go well. no, what's going on? Way it goes, right. But it's a matter of there is that pressure that's put on yeah. people of color to be the representative of your culture in a lot of spaces yes. when it comes to diversity. And yeah. I mean, Arlen Hamilton just was quoted last year, she spent how much time, do you guys know Arlen is the, she started um, Backstage Capital, it's a venture capital firm that invests in it. women and people of color. Mm -hmm. um, she's black, queer, from San Francisco, was homeless for a number of years, was like, the door was shut in her face a million different times from the VC perspective, like mm -hmm. you don't belong in our world. She shows up in a hoodie, now she is the number one kind of investor in, in people of color and women yeah. coming out of San Fran. Like there's, Andreessen Horowitz I think is doing a, a fund with her, and mm. don't quote me on all this, you'll have to fact check, this is me yes. remembering <laughs> yes. from Twitter and all that. Yeah. But she even came out and said, Right. I'm not speaking on diversity anymore. Like I've had, I've said all I can say yeah. about that. I'm here speaking about what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm not here to be the only person representing my culture on this stage or my gender on this stage mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm here to talk about what I do and what I'm good at. Yeah. And like you'll learn something different from me because I look different than the people here. But we don't. I'm not always going to be the the token person that you're going to put on a panel because to be that representative. Yeah. yeah. You know what else is interesting about that too? And granted. We're going to have a, a combo about it in the future. But um, if the workplace was as diverse as it should be, and when you're working with a team toward a common goal, and you're adding, like, like that, that should be where it's easy. That should be yeah. where it's available. Yeah. But that's not the case all the time. It's actually yeah. fascinating. I'm, I'm glad we brought this up because there is so, I've, I've personally gotten so much value in having conversations about race with and gender with straight white men. Right, and like there is, I think, a reluctance and a defensiveness that comes along with a bunch of straight white men getting together mm -hmm. for purposes of learning about race. Like everybody's initial reaction, their instinct is to be like, "Oh, we shouldn't be doing this." You know, this feels like the KKK. Like who knows? And and like and there's something to that, right? Like there's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. this immediate instinct, like, "Oh no, we shouldn't be getting. We need to go out and talk to people that know what they're talking about." But I, like some of my most productive and on and honest, most yes. importantly, honest, yes. my most honest conversations have been with. Mentors of mine that are that share my identity, yeah. right? Well, that's and exactly like, then what we can talk said. about the th yeah, and right, and finding like, a space with like people yeah. that are like you to understand actually need your that questions. space to, yeah. Yes. But it's so not like, okay for white process. people to do that right now. It is not okay. Elaborate. I mean, I, I, because I think a part of it is good from a standpoint of you know that you can mess up with your white homeboy. Yes. He's not going to completely yep. eviscerate you. Yep. Yeah. You know? yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I did that too. Check you like, oh yeah, you can't say that. He does that. Like you need to train that tongue. A little bit on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, on layer, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it may not be the end of the friendship. Right? Yeah. Which right. I think whereas, we, whereas, we, you and I have talked like, about friendships, we've been like, yo, I had to completely awful. sever. No, it, wasn't, it, wasn't from one, it wasn't from one statement. Yeah. It was over time, multiple conversations, right. lots yeah. of grace, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, you're just like, yeah, nah, yeah, I just can't no more. Yeah, right. but I understand. That. Yeah. Right. So but. it's celebrated, I'm black in tech, it's mm -hmm. celebrated um, uh, to and it should be, mm -hmm. to find sp safe spaces for people of color, women, mm -hmm. men, to get together, there cannot be a, I'm white in tech, because that's the norm. Oh, there correct. cannot be a white entrepreneur get together. There cannot be those things. Facts. It's not OK. Uh, yeah. But there is a need for that safe space mm -hmm. for exactly what you guys just said. Yeah. And I, yeah I, I, when you say it's not OK, do you mean like you think there would be a public backlash? Is this like a publicity issue? Is it people, not, is it people not coming like, to the table? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the circumstance. This okay. point yeah. came from yeah. a learning that I had where I had two of my black girlfriends with me, and one of them was like, honestly, Michael, I feel bad for you. And I was like, what? She's like, I just, I feel bad for white people right now because it's really hard to have these conversations, and it's not OK for you to celebrate your whiteness, and that shouldn't be a thing, but that's complicated. 
And my other friend was like, what are you talking about? Michael's fine. Like, this is fine. But I was like, no, actually, like, Audrey, like, what Audrey said really does speak to me in some ways because I am now in charge of teaching my white girlfriends or, or white friends mm -hmm. about different things. But then they see an article that's like, oh, dear white women, like, this is wrong. And no one wants to read that. No one wants to read something that immediately vilifies you yeah. and tells you something's wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there's not that space to learn and feel comfortable. And if you created it, it from a public standpoint. Like if I had a white women, let's get together and talk about diversity, that would be shitty because what do white women know about diversity and how are they going to have that conversation? And that's not the truth and that wouldn't be the heart of it. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah. But I'm, it's, it's I think I'm just, I agree that that's the, the, it's, the it's popular hard, it's sentiment, like a, yeah. but I'm, I'm rejecting that. Yeah. You know and what I'm I mean? okay with you yeah, rejecting I'm it rejecting. and it's something that's complicated and needs to be pulled apart, yeah. but it, it's, it's that space of I don't know what the solution is, but I know a lot of people are confused and moving through the world without yeah. that group of people to be like, is it okay when I do this? Or I don't know. Or just to be like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm figuring that out. And that's because it's traditionally been there's white people that have these spaces or own these spaces, right. and now people are stepping into them, which is good and what we want, yeah. but it, they're, mm -hmm. it's complicated. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a, there's a nuance to, to what is that you're saying that mm -hmm. I, I definitely, there's a part of it that I definitely agree with. Yeah. And his resistance, I think I might be in a similar alignment with that just because I think the most change will happen when white folks do get together. Mm -hmm. And there's totally. white people educating other white folks on like, let me help you understand from our perspective of how yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we don't know the black experience, but when they say X, they're not lying. Like when they walk through things, like just, just, just giving concrete examples, just really, yeah. espousing that level of like empathy mm -hmm. because I think there's a mixture of two and there's times where we have the 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 conversations across lines of color where and it's it's visible where I can tell there's a well-intentioned white person that says something that just lacks complete like that's so off yeah and like you try to stay calm, but body language wise, you're just like, bruh. It's vicious. Like, like it yeah. crawls <laughs> you just like, can't help it. And that's something that you could right away, yeah. you could you could you do know. your best to try to say it nicely, yeah. but they saw how you felt. Yeah. You know? And that's one of those things where in that way it's almost impossible to have these real conversations because uh, across color lines off, yeah. it's because it's cringeworthy. And you see that and no matter what this person says, you saw the way they responded and you're just like I messed up again. I messed up in public. I'm so embarrassed. I'm shutting down. I can't even hear what their response is because I can't believe. Because I'm feeling I, so bad because I just said, oh my God, they just came out of my mouth. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so I do think the most productive, nah, we need both. But I think the most, but like a, 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 a major component of that progress is going to come from white people having these conversations and doing their best to not fully understand because we can never, like, I don't know what it's like to be a woman, period. Mm -hmm. Understand that it's different. Understand that they have like, like different things to be concerned about, that, like like the being one hundred. Like understand, they walk through life differently. I'm not going to ever claim to be like, oh, well, I'm an expert on that. Like that's not the way that fucking works. Yeah. But I think just having these conversations and all that is just super necessary. And we got to stop being uncomfortable and we got to start being productive about it. Something else that I think is fascinating too in this conversation, we had already talked about how we have allies and well-intentioned. Uh, white friends that appropriate unintentionally or say things that are just a bit like, uh, just because yeah, you got yeah. black friends, you can't be out saying the N-word, like, uh, it's yeah, not, yeah. no, like, I can't claim you right now, like, you know. But like, <laughs> <laughs> not saying, mine, not I'm mine. Saying, <laughs> I do think there's something that's super fascinating and definitely not talked about. I went to Chance's concert, and I mean, it was mad white kids there, uh -huh. mad white kids. Mm -hmm. and I was like, what y'all know about like yeah like what y'all know they knew everything they knew his old old stuff they knew all the acid like they 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 were essentially bigger fans than me and i was just like man like it 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 said a lot that i felt some kind of way that it was just full of white kids just period i shouldn't mm -hmm. give a fuck i should i should like like music is supposed to to bring people right. together so but intrinsically and i'm gonna sit here and own it yeah i was yeah, just yeah. like low-key back my like what y'all doing here I was like, oh, they out here killing it, knowing all the words, having yeah, a good-ass yeah, yeah, time yeah. with their friends. And it's just one of those things where our, our younger generation is growing up in this headspace that's very, very different yeah. than us. Yeah. And it's very different than, than our parents. And it's just like, if all you knew was how dope Obama was and how trash Trump is, and like just like everybody that's setting the trend, like music, hip-hop, it's like all black, 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 popping, popping, popping. It's really all you know. And there's not really like appropriation in that shape, way, or form. But that's what you like, grew up with. Exactly. Right. And I think that's a conversation that folks aren't having, is that cultural appropriation, 
I don't want to say it's, it's going to look different, but like, it's well, not going to be at the fault of these different. kids. But it's not going to be yeah. at the fault of these kids. Yes. And this is something that like, I don't think we're prepared to have such a conversation. I don't think black people that are that, that still, and I don't want to say black people, anybody that's struggling with the bullshit and the injustices that is being black in America, it's going to be like, ah, like we, 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 and I'm not asking for handouts, but like no reparations, no, no acknowledgement of the transgressions right. that are literally in well, the, the DNA. Of the trauma. Exactly. It's literally mm -hmm. in your DNA. Mm -hmm. And that part's going to be tough to reconcile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Folks aren't going to be able to vibe with, yeah, I mean, you might love Barack as much as I love Barack, but like, it's just going to be different and yeah. no one's having that convo. Yeah. And I'm just kind of curious sure. to, to hear what you guys think about like how these young kids are supposed to navigate. Because if they straight up just grew up on Yeezy and Hove and like, they, yeah. like, like, like what are they supposed to do? Well, I think they just live in a different world. So they live in a world where pop culture is completely synonymous with black culture. Like, Correct. Pop culture is, is black culture. Like they are one and the same. Like what is popular? Like you look at, hey, you dress cool. 99.9% .9 of the time when someone says you dress cool, they are referring to you dressing quote unquote black. Yes. Or what comes from black culture, right? Facts. So, so like, when we talk about like popular music, like look at the pop charts, it's all influenced by hip hop, hip -hop which is black music, right? Yes. So, so, so I think they grow up in a world where popular culture and black culture are actually one and the same. So it's a completely different like situation than growing up in a world where black culture is completely like shoveled to the side, completely, I'm like demonized, seen mm -hmm. as bad. And then every now and then someone decides to, I'm like dip in and go, hey, I discovered these kids that are calling themselves NWA. Look, I found this hip hop, you know what I mean? And it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad you were able to find this gem of talent yeah. amongst these people that have no talent and are just killing each other. Wow, go ahead and bring them out, you know what I mean? And so. I, I think it's, it's different there, but I think it's still similar in the fact that the culture that's pop culture is still criminalized when it's not seen in a popular light. Like, so these kids would be at a Chance concert, mm -hmm. loving it, singing every single song, all this kinds of stuff, but make no mistake, you leave that Chance concert, everything Chance is talking about, the people that roll with Chance, the people that he's, that he's rapping about, the experiences he's rapping about are still criminalized in the society that we live are still seen as bad experiences, are still seen as people that don't have value. Chance is popular. Mm -hmm. Chance is influencing culture, so therefore Chance has value. Mm -hmm. But if Chance was still just, if, 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 if no one knew who he was, and he was just Lil Chano, still rapping and whatnot, especially in front of a store in like Lincoln Park, he's mm -hmm. getting snatched up. Mm -hmm. No one's walking past like, oh, he's, he, Oh like, oh, like he's the next hot thing. Nah, hey bro, go somewhere else with that. Hip hop music has to be validated in some sort of way in order for popular culture to actually celebrate it. Well, my has way. To, yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's the one that immediately example. comes to mind. She could try on, you know, pop star. She can try on country singer. She can try on rap. She can try on whatever she wanted. And then when she goes home, she still gets to be whatever she wanted. She got to try those on and take the value from it. And whatever you think about Miley or, or any of those spaces, she won in that sense. Mm -hmm. She was able to take the value and the excitement out of each of those situations and then go home and decide whatever she wanted to be yeah. from there, which is why this is a conversation. Mm -hmm. Because did she culturally appropriate or did she appreciate? And I don't know her, and I, I think the way that she handled a lot of things was, was really poorly done mm -hmm. and was real crap, but yet, you know, now more people are aware of different things, or there's things that people didn't see that were Miley fans growing up, and now they see something different. Yeah, I mean, or even like Post Malone. It's a perfect example, you know? Like, I think Post does his own thing a little bit, though. He does do his own thing, but I think when you blatantly say, if I want to write like a serious song that connects with people, I'm not going to go to hip hop, it shows. He said that? It shows a disc. Well, I may be misquoting him to some degree. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I was about to say, whoa. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm saying that maybe discording the actual. <laughs> sentence but that's that's exactly what he said like it was a, a, essentially a conversation about how if if i want to make real music i'm going to go towards something else because like hip-hop is just kind of this fun thing that i play around with right and so i think even that like well you clearly don't understand the origin and the genesis of hip-hop yeah the history you don't understand what hip-hop is yeah. And so, but, but I still because think because that's all it was. It yeah. started exactly. off as only seriousness. That was, exactly. That was, that was what you said to get your point out, to vent, to be cathartic. Like, that was you sharing yeah, yeah, your yeah. experience instead of having the news tell you my experience. Right. 
But you'll listen to post and it's just like, oh man, I love it. Oh wow, everybody loves hip hop. Everybody really respects hip hop. Everyone values hip hop. It's like, well, not necessarily. So everyone just enjoys this experience. Everyone enjoys this wave. Everyone enjoys feeling included in what's hot. I don't trust that when we celebrate the clothing or that it's hot to be in, in clothing that came from the black community, that even the kids that are growing up in it are doing it and are actually honoring like black humanity, right? Mm -hmm. Like I don't, and I don't know that, but, I, but it, it feels to me, which is like, okay, you know, feels to me like, like we're fetishizing it as opposed to actually loving black yeah. people. Like to your point, it, yes. I absolutely believe that if I took a, an older generation white person and they saw me dress in a particular item of clothing and saw the same exact person dress in that clothing on 75th and Green, they would have an entirely different reaction to the clothing, yes. right? Um, yeah. Okay, I think also piggyback on what you're saying too is these kids might be growing up fetishizing the culture and fetishizing our contributions, yet when we die, no one's like, oh, we gotta march, yet when we die, no one's like, oh, yeah. this is wrong. Mm -hmm. They're not showing up to support the culture in that way. You, you're saying that the, that the youth see that, 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 that the many contributions that people of, of color bring into pop culture, yeah. and yet they still don't necessarily see our humanity connected to I, it. I don't yeah. think they do at all. No, I, I, I mean, so I'm either. obviously, I'm, I'm speaking in generalizations, right? Yes. So, so I think this whole all, all disclaimer is, yes. right, I'll yes. qualify that. But yeah, yeah. like people aren't loving Cardi B. They're I like, I think that when certain white middle schoolers are watching her Instagram feed, they're laughing at her, right? And not laughing with her yeah. and not being honest about her as a black person. I mean, I think the way I see it is, and this is kind of the way I, um, this could be fair or not. The way I judge, or like, no, I don't want to say judge. The way yeah, I, I was going to say, this is about to get serious, yes. oh. <laughs> um, the way that I perceive yeah. someone's reception of people who look like me isn't based mm -hmm. on how they receive me. It's how they, it's how they receive someone who isn't as palatable as me. Ooh. I think so. Like I got something to say when you finish. That. I don't yep. So like because of that, I was out with my wife um, a few, maybe two months ago or so, and mm -hmm. we were at this bar, and it's kind of like a dive bar or whatever. It was like all white people in there, right? And I'm, I'm a guy walk in, didn't get like all the like weird usual looks and stuff like that, and I was like, oh okay, I must have been supposed to roll the business joint, like clutch, um, right? <laughs> but here's, but but here's the thing, like I'm also as we've talked about before. I'm aware of my bigness and my blackness, so I speak a certain way, I dress a certain way, I act a certain way, I've learned to assimilate. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I can't turn it off. Mm -hmm. um, so I know how I come across, and I come across like mad safe, mad palatable in a lot of ways. So about like half hour later, this brother walks in, Pelly Pelly jacket, Jabro jeans, like, yes. <laughs> like <laughs> the Tim's, Tim's, like, Tim's. Tim's. Yes. full construction right? joints. So immediately, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I don't really care how you treated me because like I'm like, you know, safe, nice black, let's say for instance, mm -hmm. right? Once again, yeah. very much, yes. I'm like a generalization, but yes. I'm looking at how you treat this brother. Yeah. Cause like, this is the brother that you're like, oh, he isn't, he isn't like close to what we are maybe. Mm -hmm. So I'm like watching that. And I feel the same way with, when we talk about this whole conversation about like, yeah, like these are celebrities, these are yeah. famous people. This is what's hot, this is what's popping. You know, it's the same reason that people can walk around all day and be like, yes, queen, yeah, 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 yeah. But if someone says that at Walgreens, Facts. who is checking them out at the <laughs> counter, they're gonna do a survey. Yep. They were just a little much. Yep. They, they were a little over the top. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, I'm okay with it, but they were, ah, it was just. But I'm okay with it. It was just, my you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and you're that's at work, okay you need to be a it. certain way. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, hold up, weren't you just at brunch with some mimosas, like, you know, putting that on your Instagram story, saying the exact same thing? Like, come on now. I so I think it just becomes that thing where it's like, we like it in the way we like it. And what's really interesting, though, is we're talking about famous people of color. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of a guide of a lot of pieces of this conversation. But what's happening and what our youth are seeing now, President Barack Obama was the president. Lori Lightfoot is the mayor. For the past, um, growing up, when we were younger, there weren't people of color in yeah. positions of power. power. Yeah. There were people of color in positions of entertainment and positions of being famous in those ways. Yeah. So I think that's where our youth will have an opportunity and people coming up to see things that are different. You know, yeah. we, were, we were talking about the documentary on AOC before this. Like yeah. that is someone it's that I can example. like resonate yeah, with yeah. as a woman yeah. who's a young woman, and now she's in politics. For me, for the past my entire life, politics was like, oh yeah, like 
that's old white men. Like I saw what you did there, by the way. <laughs> We're not saying your age. Smooth. <laughs> she was like, mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> get it. <laughs> but, that's, but that's a big piece of it, right? Is we're yeah, all, yeah. we all could be different. I don't even know how old you guys are. We all could be a little bit different in age, and we have different experiences because of that. But watching, and, and that was like a big part of why I do the work that I do, is if you don't see someone as an executive, as a person of color, and you don't hear them speaking like their authentic self, then you don't see that as that position. You don't see that as yeah. that space. So the fact that AOC is in office and speaking the same way that she did when she was tending bar, yeah. it, it bridges that gap. The fact that now women of color are able to wear a hair wrap to work or wear natural hair, the fact that history has just been made, three black women won Miss America, Miss oh, USA, yeah, Miss and Miss Universe. something, and uh, two of the three of them were wearing natural hair. Yeah. So not only was it hey, I'm, I'm up here and I'm up here on a stage that traditionally I wasn't welcome on, but I'm up here on a stage actually in my authentic self, not yeah, my yeah, yeah. safe black person, safe person of color self. Yeah. I'm here as me, I'm showing up, and people are accepting that. So we're seeing the change, and although it's small, I mean, we're Chicago, and we have a black lesbian woman mayor. Yeah, like, that is, is fire, like that is insane. Like that is so city, yeah. that is so mm -hmm. cool for whatever happens just for that one statement mm -hmm. to be a reality. Like I just got the chills right now talking about it. Like yeah, yeah. I grew up in a blue collar family on the south side. Like firefighters, police officers, like those are the people I grew up around. So when I do the work that I do, they're curious. Yeah. But to see that this could actually happen with the generations that we have that are still voting, that are still part of this, that are still in this conversation, yeah. it'll be really interesting to watch how mm. that conversation happens for our youth now that they're seeing people that look like them or look completely different than them in these positions of power in different ways. I, I think that like that's such an important point. Yeah, in the, yeah, in I'm, those I'm, I'm so ready for this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm so ready for this point. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Be because, <laughs> no, because like especially in oh. contrast to the way that we engage with like the celebrity circus yeah and what comes to mind for me is like how uh, we engage with professional athletes too mm -hmm. yeah like that's, that's a, a circus commodity. don't yes. mean man there's nowhere I, I like less than sitting in a National Football League stadium and I love watching football yeah, yeah. but surrounded by people that feel to me like they're not rooting with the team but like they're watching a bunch of animals on the field yes right <laughs> like don't tell me the guy throwing his beer hurling racial slurs you know yeah. while he's cares drunk, about the quarterback. <laughs> cares about like the fact that you know whatever percentage of the athletes on that field are black yeah, you know yeah, yeah. like Facts. he's not and, and, and that that Facts. that kind of engagement with like professional sports mm. I don't think has has done service to people of color in providing them with a certain kind of power mm. and value, yeah. Yeah. but it, I don't think it's done a service uh, with like certain people engaging with the material itself. I don't think they're learning from that the same yeah. way I don't think they're learning from hip hop or fashion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. To, to conflate yeah. and bounce off of what that, because that right there I think yeah. is massive. Like that right, woo, like for real, no, for real, for real. Yeah. Because I now fully understand and get what it is from a standpoint of, we might celebrate our like fashion contributions, our, our yep. musical contributions, our athletic contributions, but that's still putting people in boxes. Mm -hmm. Seeing black folks in positions of power that these youth, that the, that the youth are seeing is completely changing the framework mm -hmm. in a way that, uh, I mean, like, mm -hmm. like, like, I'm 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 just wow like like, like like I feel really really good like that's a that's a perspective that I wasn't quite I mean I just didn't think of it that way because once again I want this to be really solution oriented and I think about like you said they're listening to music but when black folks die they're still like there's the entertainment sing. and it's yes. separate but yes. if it's the but actual power the people yes. that make the decisions that it why makes this us street human. gets fixed why this happens it makes us complex it becomes yeah. part of the the real world that we live yes. in versus the entertainment Enter that we mm -hmm. seek from whether it's sports, yeah, whether yes. it's music, that's whether right. it's other areas. It, yes. That's that separating line where now this is part of my everyday life. Yes. Now this is a person that is running things that looks different than me yes. and I'm respecting them. I'm learning from yes. them. They're, they're doing things that I would either not have done but I am, I'm learning from or challenge the way that I understand this culture entirely because I see someone different than me oh. doing that. Which is an evolution that has to happen because mm. I don't know if we've ever, and I can honestly, I don't think we've ever been at a place societally where we've learned to see people of color as more than one dimensional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't mm -hmm. think we've ever had that. That's so it. so, yeah, so we have it. to that's embrace it. this like multifaceted aspect of and I think it's hard because it's it's always just been okay, this is what you are like this this is all you are and I receive you as such and it either serves me or it doesn't. 
but then the rest, but the rest we kind of reject, which is why across the board, whenever someone of color starts to be like, hey, so about like my humanity, it's like, mm -hmm. whoa, don't go all out Sharpton on me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I'd, right. I'd appreciate if you just like stick doing what you're doing because it's comfortable. But we have a good thing going on, like mm -hmm. you know. And now you're like, want to be equal? Like calm down. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think it, 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 it's, it, it kind of disrupts the status quo because of the fact that we've never really had a society that's embraced like multi-dimensional people of color. Right now, yeah. now you're not. You can't say that, oh no, Lori Lightfoot's just really fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't say Lori Lightfoot <laughs> yeah. jumps really high. That's yeah. it. Yeah, That's yeah. what she does for us as, yeah, a, yeah. as a world. You can't say that she's got rid of. Maybe she does. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. These, these, like, these things could very well be true, but you but can't. But she's you, you cannot. You cannot box her in, in yeah. that way. Yeah. Right? You're like, oh wow, that's a whole human being. Yeah. And she's running this city, and I don't know. And, I, yeah. and that's undeniable. Yeah. Right. That's, that's actually pretty, pretty fascinating. Yeah. I, did, I didn't expect the conversation to pivot in such a way, but it's, but it's essentially like, like, yeah, just the layers and the complexity and allowing people to be more than just one thing. Yeah. There's also like this mixture too that's, that's fascinating in that conversation where we talk about how we get in these bubbles and we're, we're not in positions to actually like connect and be exposed to each other. Mm -hmm. If all you've seen me is through a lens of sports and mm -hmm. all I've seen myself is through a lens of sports, mm -hmm. when I automatically assume growing up that I have to be an athlete or a performer, yeah, I, can't get, I can't get mad at white folks for thinking that's, that, 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 that's the only thing that I could be too because that's literally all we've both seen. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a conversation that's just interesting. And wow, I'm just how we go from cultural appropriation to cultural yeah, appreciation yeah, yeah. <laughs> to to the humanization of the marginalized is kind of pretty powerful. Well, because yeah, I think it's just breaking the, down the more it's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're really trying to figure out how yeah. do we appreciate. Yeah. And I like, think the more we humanize the people, the more we allow ourselves to like reconcile with our past and be like, yeah. like yeah. because that's that's essentially solely but surely what's happening. Is right. now we get into positions of power to tell our story. Yeah. Now you get to see our story and see the history and see the contributions right, right, right. that you weren't allowed to see before and now that changes the whole entire conversation. It realizes yeah. it. it makes it a real thing in your life yes. that you can interact with versus oh yeah that's a story or something yes. that I've heard. How nuanced was that? I mean so what it all sounds like to me is a little bit is our ability to be finally represented in more ways than just three or four lanes is what's going to essentially make it feel, at least in my opinion, like we're not being appropriated as much. When, yeah. when, when we get to be in positions of power, tell our story, sell our story, yeah. make our guap, profit off of our <laughs> contributions, yeah. being one hundo, this yeah. is one of those things where, I, I, wow. This is what I made. I wasn't. I don't know that I was trying to say this in the beginning, but it's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I probably I wasn't trying to say all this. But <laughs> no, but but it's appropriation. I don't think is culturally or socially violent. The point at which you value the humanity in the culture as much as you do the actual commodity that it produces. Like yeah. that's the point at which that I have yeah. that's, 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 that's what I don't, I didn't have all that though. No, no, no. <laughs> but, but, but that's they got there together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the conversation we had. And there's like, this conversation right. yeah. that, that explained right. that further. And, and yeah. even, you know, the point right. I made at the beginning was celebration. Yeah. And it's a celebration right. of not just the entertainment. It's a celebration of the humanity, the, the brain power, the, the actual you-ness that comes into the room in the Eunice as the two different beings yes. and not yes. just, oh, I'm safe or, oh, he's cool. Yes. You know, it's not, he's yeah. cool for a black person. No, he's cool. Period. Yeah, That's yeah, it. Yeah. No, yeah. She's cool for a girl. No, she's cool. Period. Like, yeah. She's good at sports for mm -hmm. a girl. No, she's mm -hmm. good at like, those pieces of it are where we start to break down and come together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were, I mean, they, I mean, oh, I mean yeah. I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm satisfied. You go ahead. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Put the pressure off you, bro. No, I mean, I honestly think it just comes down to this. In order to eradicate appropriation, we really have to have a culture of appreciation. And I think, once again, it becomes this conversation of the solution to something isn't just getting rid of it. It's replacing it with something else and moving in the other direction. And I think sometimes we go like, okay, we got to stop appropriation, no more appropriation. And it's like, yo, I'm with that, but are people growing in appreciation? Because if we just stop appropriation, like, this, this yeah. ain't stop you on can't wear that because you look like that isn't the answer. It's, yeah, yeah. Do you know what you're wearing? Do you know what you're saying? And do you know why that matters and uh, what the history of it is? Yeah, true. Thank y'all, man. Like, this was like. Yeah, it was on point, man. Yeah. And I'm I, like. Yeah. I'm, I'm like. 
the show was doing what I wanted to do. And that's the whole point. And I'm just like really, really excited to get like diverse like perspectives and viewpoints and people that are like willing to be vulnerable in these conversations because they're hard. At the same time, they're they're the rubric, they're they're the syllabus for progress. <coughs> and um, that was amazing. <laughs> like I just, I just, I'm really, I'm, I'm almost at a loss of words, but I never am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being, I'm just really, really excited that the show is creating the kind of conversation and the kind of discourse that yeah. I'm hoping for. It's really, really great when people are like courageous enough to talk about the sticky things on on camera because it's very real easy to get canceled out here in these streets. Yeah. <laughs> that, that matters. Yeah. But I just, I, I just really, really, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy we got to chop it up, and yeah. I appreciate you guys taking the time out to share the stage with me. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for making space for yeah. us to be part yeah. of this conversation yeah. and for no these doubt. conversations to get out because people need to hear them. Facts. And you need to understand yeah. that you're not wrong, you just might not know. And yeah. then you can learn there and grow. And that's a place of growth, so yep. and that's what we all need to be doing is we should constantly be seeking growth, and yes. that's how we celebrate each other and yes. take advantage of out. Yes. Take advantage. And appreciate each other. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, man.